In this video, we will be reviewing the largest name brand floating panel receiver to date and the newest addition to Alpine's Halo lineup. This is Alpine's Halo 11, official model number ILX-F411 with yes, an 11 inch monitor. Hey, my name is Josh, I'm with Breakers Stereo and Performance, and we're going to be kicking off 2021 off correctly by reviewing Alpine's ILX F411. So Alpine was the originator of the floating panel receiver with the ILX-F309, which is a nine inch LCD capacitive touchscreen loaded with a bunch of features. And all major manufacturers have developed and released radios in that category, starting with Sony's XAV-AX8000, which is also a nine inch screen but priced considerably less than the Alpine. So Alpine countered by scaling down their version of the F309 with the ILX-F259, which was priced closer to the Sony price. Then Pioneer released their 9-inch and their 10.1-inch at the same time with the DMH-WT7600 NEX and the 8600 NEX. Then Kenwood jumped in the game and did an awesome job with their 10.1, which is the DMX 1037S and the Exelon series DMX 1057XR. They also have an onboard navigation version with the DNR 1007XR and also the JVC KW-Z1000W, which is very similar to Kenwood's non-navigation units, but without the knob. And now Alpine has brought to market their newest 11 inch screen the Halo 11 ILX-411. So first we'll go over some key features, then we'll do an unboxing, and then we'll fire this thing up for a full demonstration. After that, we'll be going over the pros and cons list, and finally, we'll be giving you our overall rating on this radio. But first, we have to let you know that this radio can be purchased on our website. We'll leave a link in the description below, and that'll take you directly to the product page. So at Breaker Stereo on Performance, we do have a lot of financing options available. Just add to cart, pick a financing option, get approved, and then we'll send this radio out to you ASAP. Okay, so let's get going. So this radio is an 11 inch capacitive touchscreen and is extremely responsive and has really good picture quality. Now it does not have a CD or DVD player, but it does have plenty of music and video playback options with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto through the USB using apps like Apple Music, Google Play, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, and more both audio and video playback on USB files through a thumb drive. And with an HDMI input, the ability to mirror both iPhones and Androids. So with that mirroring option, you'll be able to stream apps like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon videos, YouTube, and more. And other features include Bluetooth for phone calls and music playback with an external Bluetooth mic, 45 watts times four peak power, six channel, four volt pre-out for adding amplifiers, a five band graphic equalizer, time alignment, high pass filters, both through the RCA outputs and the onboard amplifier, and then low pass filters through your sub RCA as well. So here's how this can benefit you. If you're running a single amplifier for bass and you're wiring up your interior speakers to the power of the radio, you're able to cross over those speakers to reduce the amount of bass that they will play. So when you go to turn it up, your interior speakers, although they're not powered by an external amplifier, will play a little louder before distortion. Okay, so here's how you do this. So first turn off the subwoofer at the radio and then play your favorite song. Then go into the crossover settings and turn the crossover to 80 Hertz. Then increase the volume until you start to hear distortion and then set the frequency higher until the distortion decreases or goes away. If it doesn't, then turn the radio lower. Once that is set, go ahead and turn your subwoofer back up and see how it sounds. You're gonna to wanna to try different songs and do the same process. And just like any system, you need to know the system's capability and more importantly, its limitations. In doing this with several songs, you'll get to know your system pretty well. Okay, so that's not the technical way to tune a system, but it's quick and easy, and we hope that helps. Okay, other features include Sirius XM ready, SXV300 tuner required, steering wheel control ready, steering wheel control adapter required, iDataLink Maestro control, Maestro RR interface required. This head unit has HDMI outputs as well. So if you're running a rear entertainment system that has HDMI inputs, you can mirror what's playing on this screen to play what's on the rear entertainment screen. Now, why is that a big deal? 
Well, most aftermarket head units that have video outputs have a standard composite out. So let's say you're mirroring your smartphone into your head unit using an HDMI, and you want to have that play on the rear entertainment system. If your head unit only has output through a composite cable, you will not be able to mirror that HDMI because the HDMI will not scale down without using a correct adapter, which sometimes can be tricky. Now, some are available on Amazon and eBay, although the picture quality is never quite the same as the HDMI to HDMI connection, and we've used them in the past and had some trouble where you had to unplug it, plug it back in, in order for it to recognize the signal. Okay, and the last feature that we're gonna go over is a single camera input. Okay, so I believe that covers it for now, so let's go ahead and do the unboxing. All right, let's check it out. So this box is pretty big. All right, so we'll start with the contents that are in here and then we'll go back to this. All right, so we have manual. Let me pop this open. What kind of goodies in here? Bluetooth mic. These are the brackets that go on the back. If you don't put those brackets on, it will not turn on. All right, USB. We got RCAs, it looks like some camera inputs, or a camera input, I should say, does this have one camera? So that yellow one is dedicated to the rear view camera. And then we have an aux input as well. Main power cable, iDataLink adapter. And there's your brackets, and then that's for the Bluetooth mic. All right, so that's that. Oh man, this is pretty big, jeez. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's check this out first before we open up the uh, the rest of it. So this screen, it's pretty massive. So this is the bracket that you need to put on the back of this, otherwise it will not turn on. These are the side brackets. Okay, wow, look at that, man. That is pretty large. Wow, 11 inch. All right, cool. So you have a row of buttons on the bottom here, and then there is a border that goes around here. All right, that's the screen itself. All right, so as you can see, it's a single gen chassis. We found, it's a little easier to work with these in certain vehicles because if your radio is not a doubled in and let's say you want to put the Kenwood in then you're gonna have a little bit of trouble there that's that the screen goes over the top of this so let me put this together real quick so you just can see then there's screws here that go on the top to hold it together but that's it right there it's pretty massive and then on the back side, let's take a look at what we got here. I'm gonna just go ahead and detach this. So we have HDMI input, HDMI output, and then that's your power plug pre-out with the camera, mic for your Bluetooth, USB recess, which is nice. Also, make note, the HDMIs are also recessed. So you can put those in, put them down a little bit, and then put that in the dash. On some of these radios, the HDMI is just on the back, not recessed. So when you put it in, it kind of sticks out. So you got to kind of, you have to be careful when you put it in the dash. So having it recessed is really nice because uh, it won't come loose or it's less likely to come loose. Uh, and then you have your iDataLink Maestro input here, Sirius XM, and then you just AM FM antenna. Okay, so let's go over the hardware bags. So you get two sets of screws that come with this. Now this set of screws, which do not have any type of blue markings or any type of thread locker on it, this is for the side. So basically when you're installing this radio into your vehicle and you have side brackets or if the kit comes with side brackets, these are the screws that you use to mount to the side brackets when you're putting it into the vehicle. Now these screws here with the thread locker, these right here have to do with the positioning and the mounting of the screen to the chassis and i'll show you how this is done so it does come in the manual if you don't like to read the manual then just follow along here and i'll show you how we're going to do this so the first thing here is we do have a couple screws on the top and on the bottom and if you loosen these this will give you the ability to move the screen in and out so i'm going to go ahead and loosen this really quick and then i'll show you exactly what this does so you got two on the top and then two on the bottom. These are small little black screws. And again, these are already in the chassis already, so they don't come in the bag. And if you wanna move the screen in and out, you have to loosen this. See, now this is loose. So now if we want, we can bring this out further to here. Okay, so if you wanted it outward and you would pull this out, screw it in the top and the bottom, 
And if you want it inward, just put it back. So I'm just gonna leave it inward. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back. And I don't recommend using a power tool. Just use hand tools when you're doing this. You don't wanna strip these bolts. Now on this, as you can see, you have two bolts on each side, here and here. And then this bracket will move up and down the screen. So if you want it higher, then you leave it in this position. If you want it lower, then you loosen these up. Okay, so once those are removed, you're able to slide this up and down. And you have a couple different positions here. That's the lowest position that that's going to be. And then the highest position that's going to be. And you got a couple in between. So you have one, two, three, four, five. So you have five positions that you could set this. Okay, so let's just say we're gonna go ahead and set this. Let's call it the middle. We'll go to the middle position here. And again, everything that we've loosened, removed and reinstalled, it's already on the screen and the chassis. I haven't touched anything in the bags quite yet, but we will do that in a minute. Okay, so now we're going to loosen these up and these silver screws here will allow us to adjust the pitch, straight up and down pitch, or I should say no pitch. And then if you move it downward, then you have this position here. Now, if you wanted to, you can opt not to have these screws in, it'll play without, and then you'll, have, you'll be able to freely move it. So the two lower positions will allow us to get this angle. So the lowest position and the position right above that will allow us to get this reverse angle. If you go up higher, then it hits the bottom and you're not able to do that. All right, so make note of that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and affix the screen to the chassis and we're gonna go ahead and open our bag and we're going to use the silver screws in order to do that. So you have two on top here and there's two more that go in from the top that are a little bit deeper. So one there and then one on the opposite side. So these remaining screws, they just kind of give you as extras just in case you might lose one. You drop it in the vehicle and it gets stuck in between the seat. It can be kind of tough to get out, kind of hard to find. Okay, so that's that. And then this piece here. So this is the piece I'm talking was talking about earlier. This needs to be attached to the back of this. Otherwise it will not turn on and even, even get this warning that states if you do not have that power plate attached to the back of the display, it's not gonna turn on. So you got the bracket and they give you two screws just in case you may lose one. Actually, this screw is pretty small. So it's uh, nice that they gave you an extra one just in case. So that plastic piece goes around there and then there's the hole that we put the screw in. And that's it. So right off the bat, huge screen. This thing is an 11 inch monitor, so it's big. The icons are huge. So, I mean, it's a good looking screen here. So this is the menu. I'm gonna go through everything here, starting with general. All right. So you have your radio, tuner settings, set to hi-fi, stable, normal, I'm just gonna hit normal. And then you have frequency stops at 100 kilohertz or 200 kilohertz. Then you have your Sirius XM. And again, you do need your Sirius XM tuner, language set, a language is set to English, and then wallpaper and theme. You can choose between these colors, red. I'm just gonna set it to blue. Upload an image as well. All right, and then you have your screen, LCD. Right now it's set to auto in the dimmer. Um, you could adjust here, your dimmer, and then your illumination level as well. I'm just gonna set it to auto. And then we have your clock. So clock, just adjust here. Hit okay, and that saves. Display, if I hit that, it's just gonna turn it off, not a big deal. About's gonna give you your version information as far as software is concerned. So if there are software updates available, you can check here to see what version you have. Installation, right now I have the parking brake uh, bypass. So that's on, as you can see in the reverse is there as well. Rear entertainment system. So here, this is for your HDMI. So if I set it to on, then I can choose the format. I can just leave it at auto. That's gonna be your best bet. Then you can choose your steering wheel position. I data link, default vehicle screen. So you can select here what you want to display and then parking assist enabled or disabled. Again, you do need the iDataLink Maestro RR or the new version in order to have that connection. Okay, so Bluetooth info. You have your Bluetooth version. 
set device. The name of this is going to be, of course, the ILX F411. And then you have auto answer. So if you get an incoming call, it's just going to answer it. And then we're going to select here if you want Apple CarPlay or not. Okay, that's it for connection. Then you have your camera. Select your camera off or rear. Now, right now, it's not going to let me select these because I don't have a camera hooked up to it. So we'll just jump to sound. So you have Media Expander. You have three levels of that. Level one, two, and three. EQ presets. All right. There's a number of these depending on the type of music you're listening to. Or if you want to adjust it yourself, um, you can go into the graphic EQ. We'll get to that in a minute. You have bass and treble. And then there's a subwoofer level. Right now, the subwoofer level is ghosted out because we have not selected it on yet. So I'll go ahead and select that on right now. Skip ahead a little bit. All right, and now the graphic EQ. So you get a five band graphic EQ. You can either tap it and move it up and down if you like, or tap the band that you want and then just move plus and minus. Then you also have a couple presets here and then also one at flat. Okay, then we have time correction. And what you want to do here is measure the distance between the center of the speaker to the center of the headrest on each corresponding speaker in the vehicle. And then you do have your crossovers. So here we'll select the channel, we'll go front, we'll pick our crossover level, 80, select the slope between six, 12, 18, 24. Okay, next rear, select the frequency you want to cross over. Again, you can select the slope between six, 12, 18, 24. And then you also have your subwoofer. Okay, set that however you like. Let's just set the 80 and then again, Select the slope, 6, 12, 18, 24. And then you have volume. So this allows you to pick the source volume. So this is useful if you're switching between sources and one source is louder than the other. So let's say for instance, on your Bluetooth, it's not quite as loud as the radio. So you can go in here and then select that up and then maybe select that down so that you can make it more equal. So as you can see here, all your sources are adjustable. Then you have your Android auto volume, the media. You can set that however you like. Now if the notifications are too loud or if they're not loud enough, you can also set that as well. And same thing with Apple media notification. And even on here, you can select ringtone too. Okay. Phone volume, speaker volume, mic volume, ringtone volume as well. All right. All right, so that covers it for that. Let's go into the menu. So on your main menu, it looks like this. This is what it defaults, but you can change these widgets however you like. So let's say for instance, you don't like that big clock that's there. So you just hold it down. That takes you to here. And then from here, you wanna drag and just throw it away. Now, if we want, we can choose what we want to be on here. So I would say, let's choose some ones that would be useful. All right, so let's say you have Sirius XM. That's good to have, HDMI. And as you can see, you can move these around however you want. All right, and then we could also do USB video there. And then I think settings is a good one to have on your main menu as well. So let's just set that there and we're done. Now there's a couple pages here, as you can see on the bottom, you have three pages of sources, so you can select those and move them around as you like. Okay, let's check out the CarPlay. Okay, so Apple CarPlay looks absolutely phenomenal on here. It's nice, big, and bright. You got these huge icons, easy to work. Um, as you can see, the screen is very responsive. So let's just check out a few features here. So obviously you have your Apple Maps, and then here you can either search by voice or you can type in. And then you have, all, of course, all your other music apps. You have your Apple Music, you have Pandora, you have Spotify, Spotify will transfer over as well, iHeartRadio as well. And then you do have your Google Maps here. So if you like Google Maps, you can use that instead of the Apple Maps. And then it also do Waze. Okay, so this is the Android Auto menu. As you can see, the apps are vertical, opposed to horizontal, like Apple CarPlay. And then you have your navigation app. So you got Google Maps, you got Waze, and then for your audio music apps, you have Spotify, you have Amazon Music, Samsung Music, 
YouTube music. So basically whatever you have on your phone that's compatible is gonna populate here. All right, so we'll just kind of check this out. You got Google Maps. You can either talk to it or you can type it in as well. All right. And because Apple CarPlay and Android Auto do not offer any type of video transfer, if you wanna do that, then you can go into the HDMI input. And from here, you're able to select whatever video apps you have. So let's say you wanna go into Netflix. And then you can watch videos that way. So that's through the HDMI. So it gives you a nice big full screen. This radio has really good picture quality and then you're able to adjust as well if you need to. So that's on an iPhone, but you can obviously do it with an Android as well. And this radio also has the ability to play back video through the USB. So if you download videos onto a USB, you can play them back here. All right, so that was the demo. Let's move on to the pros and cons, starting with the pros. Of course, the 11 inch touch panel monitor. Plenty of mounting options to be able to position the screen in the dash just right. Six channel, four volt pre-outs and iDatalink capabilities. HDMI input for mirroring and HDMI output, which is a very unique feature for a floating panel radio thus far. And the superior sound quality that Alpine brings to the table. Okay, so cons, no wireless CarPlay or wireless Android Auto, single camera input, and then a five band graphic EQ versus the nine band parametric EQ that the ILX F309 comes with. And for Android users, no mirroring capabilities through the USB or wireless. Now you would think that Alpine being the first company ever to release a wireless CarPlay unit back in 2017 with the ILX 107 would have more wireless head units, but they don't. But it would surely add to the price of this unit since this radio retails for only $999 versus some of the other radios in this category with smaller screens coming in closer to $1,200. So you have to weigh it out. Would you want the wireless feature for $200 more? Personally, when I'm in my car, I always take my phone out and plug it into my stereo anyway, just so I can get some charge. So for me, it's not that big of a deal. But for the times that you don't have the cable in the car, it's definitely nice to still be able to use those features. So our overall rating for this radio is four and a half stars, with key features being the screen size, which is extremely impressive, six channel, four volt pre-outs, and HDMI inputs and outputs. Again, this radio retails for $999 and can be purchased through our website. Just click the link in the description below. So if you found this video useful or informative in any way, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Again, my name is Josh, I'm from Breaker Stereo and Performance. Thanks for watching.